Welcome to another episode of They Talk, where we talk again about HP Lovecraft related material. This time, 2005 indie film by HP Lovecraft Historical Society, based on the same name novel by HP Lovecraft called The Call of Tulhu. And as always, let's welcome our almost regular co-host, Mr. A. Tolonen, to the show. Thank you. Yes, I'm the resident expert guesser of all things Lovecraft. Yes, uh, our HP Lovecraft expert for sure. But before we go more into this magnificent piece of indie cinema, we would like to ask you to help us out by leaving us a like. That would help our channel greatly and more so in its visibility. Also, leave a comment if you have seen the film, if you have read the novel, or if you actually are a fan of H.P. Lovecraft. If you hate the guy's guts for some specific reason, please let us know that also, so we can have an open discussion about the meaning of H.P. Lovecraft as a person, as an artist, or as a popular culture icon of these days also remember to subscribe our channel and as always hit that bell for notifications so you won't miss any of our future weekly episodes on this channel i mean <laughs> yeah but let's talk about the call of tulhu and we can also talk about the novel i i believe hp lovecraft wrote it back in the 1928 if i don't remember wrong yes it is the Call of Tulu, 1928. Yeah, sounds about right. Yeah, when he wrote it, it was, uh, from what I understand, pretty groundbreaking. Uh, it got some skepticism from his usual publishers, and they weren't really too keen on publishing it either. And uh, I, I can see that it's uh, the structure is pretty peculiar, and the themes contained therein it's not something that you come across every day it's it's not like uh, abstract weird or anything like that it's just not not your typical uh three section story structure and uh it has multiple protagonists and uh and an interesting use of um, what i want to say flashbacks here I don't really know what they called them back then. Yeah, I think I think the structure is pretty fascinating and it reminds me of Bram Stoker's Dracula, which is also uh, told out of sequence and uh, and it's basically based on the diaries or the ship logs or something else. And this is not entirely the same, but it has the same kind of feeling of storytelling. So you're basically following story from the different sources as as it goes further and i think it's pretty brilliant way of telling story and and it became uh, sort of a trademark of lovecraft's approach of storytelling yeah and uh, and i guess it says something when the whole mythos kind of ended up being called the cthulhu mythos so this story must have been really uh, impactful at least among his uh, contemporaries and collaborators. Yes, that that's definitely so. And I think one of the main things is really interesting being in this story called Cthulhu or Thulhu or however you pronounce it. Yeah, and uh, it's not just a tentacle monster even. It's uh, something otherworldly like a lot of his main main beings of this caliber but something that really drives the point home that it's it's not just its physical being because um, spoiler alert when when the boat uh, rams it and what seems to be a fatal blow the description is something something like that it's um, it loses its physical form but you can see its uh, spectral form so to speak and uh, you can see it uh, starting to reform again and that you basically can't kill it and uh, the the way that 
you uh, he ends up being defeated Cthulhu ends up being defeated in the story it seems to be we never see him being defeated first of all but uh, you just conclude from the events of after that like all the worldwide uh, events of insanity and uh, and such just cease to happen after that because it seems like the stars aren't exactly right anymore and he didn't have enough time to escape his confinement so to speak so it's not like you defeated him or killed him it's just you delayed him so much that the door got closed right before his nose after that i guess we should tackle the plot shortly and and is it is basically about Thulhu becoming awake and coming to this world to i don't know enslave us or destroy the mankind or changing the in habitat where he would be manifested and the stars are aligning and Thulhu becomes more aware or more awake to his physical form and it affects mankind by plaguing people's dreams and strange artifacts have been starting to be found by archaeologists and adventurers and and the cults on the backwards states or backward rural areas are worshipping these beings that they believe that are coming and as the protagonist finds out clues and the plot is revealing itself, he learns about this captain and this uh, shipwreck crew that in the... What where, what sea was it? Was it South Pacific or...? Yeah, it's a sea in the South Pacific that uh, the crew of um, a doomed ship ends up just coming upon by sheer chance. And while being there, Cthulhu wakes and becomes in the physical form and one thing leads to another and the Thulhu, as you mentioned earlier, is defeated and uh, loses its potency and I guess the Earth and the mankind is safe for now. Uh, that's that's about it. But uh, we mentioned also earlier, or you mentioned the structure of the novel and I think many people and many, many filmmakers have think this uh, story is basically unfilmable. Yeah, I've heard the same and you can kind of understand that when you think about uh, how it starts with the protagonist as an old man and then starts going backwards in time from that, uh, recounting his experiences and not just his experiences, there's at least one chapter and in the movie, like uh, one chapter. I don't remember exactly if it was more than one chapter in the book, but in the movie it, uh, it follows an inspector in Louisiana around uh, effectively switching the main protagonist for a sizable or a lengthy part of the movie. And that's, that's um, a peculiar thing. I mean, sure, you can do it in movies, but it seems that especially in mainstream ones, yeah, that doesn't happen. Yeah, you're you're totally right there because uh, Hollywood films need need usually to have a strong central character who audience is following, and the structure of these stories rarely follow that kind of trope. So, if somebody would have wrote this as a story, I guess there would be a one character or a bunch of characters, one character side characters who would go through all of this, and this goes sort of like a like a memories or stories that they read from somewhere. And I think it's a ballsy move and can be done on such indie film. I am really impressed how they approach this whole project, being really true to the storytelling of the novel. Yeah, I completely agree. I think it's a really good example of how you can actually film a story like this. I think it flowed great and it captures the the tone of the story, in my opinion, very well. And of course, the obvious thing is that it's made in the way that a silent movie from the 20s would have been made. And to me, that's... Um, well, there's a couple of interesting thoughts that come to mind when it comes to that. It's... To me, it enhances the... the atmosphere, even on a metal level, in a sense, because you're kind of transported back to the time of Lovecraft, not just the time of the story, but uh, like outside of the story, like when Lovecraft was active and it helps your mind orient to this uh, 
pulp fiction type of thing. And to me, it works really well. But at the same time, if you read Lovecraft's comments about movies, he didn't really care for them at all. So Lovecraft didn't care for movies and the movies would have been like this one it's in a silent black and white movie. So we're essentially watching a thing that Lovecraft in his own words said that he wouldn't like, but to us, 80 to 90 years later, it can enhance the experience as opposed to if we had seen a movie that was otherwise as correct to the story as this one was, but was, ma uh, was made in the style of a more modern movie, like it would have, uh, it could have worked very well, depending on the people making it. But I think it, this making it in the style of the 20s silent black and white movie enhances the time capsule effect of this. And I think it's complementary to the novel in many ways. Of course, I think the director Andrew Liman and the Cern Prani who adapted, adapted this for the screen. And I think it really benefited those uh, filmmakers because the budgets weren't huge and they could sort of like uh, mask some of these uh, choices that they make because it is 20s style silent film. At the same time, when you're watching that, pay attention to the score, the music and the sound design of the whole thing. Like it's a completely fully scored movie and it has to be since it's a silent film, like the, the silent movies from the 20s. Uh, you have music playing almost constantly because it, of course, as with pretty much all movies, music plays a, an integral, huge part of the creating of the atmosphere. But here it's uh, paramount because you don't have any other sound. And, and the soundtrack, like when we were watching this a you know, couple of weeks ago, I really paid attention to the music because I wanted to just evaluate it at the same time to just see how much they put into it and it's just top notch. It's It certainly is top notch and it works perfectly here. Other thing that works perfectly is the length of the film which is roughly 47 minutes and uh, an uh, episode length of an American TV series and for this story the length is just perfect. It feels like a whole film, which doesn't mean that it feels long or a short, but it's just a perfect timing to tell this specific story. I completely agree. Like if they had made this longer, they almost certainly would have needed to add extraneous, like just filler, like God forbid action scenes or an unnecessarily love story or something like that. Not like, that love stories are necessarily unnecessary, but the story didn't have one, so and it doesn't need one, so why put one in there? On these days when somebody mentions unnecessary love stories, I instantly start thinking about the Peter Jackson's Hobbit trilogy with this fooling around with this dwarf and the elf lady there. I'm really thankful that the Sean Pranny and Andrew Lehman didn't go that route. Yeah, and it still has uh, undertones of love in it. Like when when the protagonist goes to Norway to visit the widow, that he he doesn't know that she's a widow when before she, he arrives there. It's the widow of the Norwegian sailor who was responsible of disposing of Cthulhu. Mm -hmm. And I think they, they, the movie actually even underlines it a bit more, I think. I just get a bigger impact from what that situation could have been, that your husband comes back and slowly loses his mind, even though we see none of this, but just from the acting performance of the widow and what that, situation really means that uh, to me it portrayed love and love lost fine in that sense that you just mentioned that the movie basically tells us or the actors are telling us that that happened that's uh breaking one of the cardinal rules of storytelling 
which would usually be that show, don't tell. But in this context, it works perfectly. Yeah, yeah, because it's uh, it, it it follows the plot uh, correctly because uh, the protagonist is going there to try and find the person, but the person is no more. So what are your options? Either talk to the people still remaining and get the information from them, which is what the story did, or you can have another flashback on top of what's already a flashback, and <laughs> then you start getting a bit weird in all possible ways i think this is maybe the perfect lovecraft adaptation maybe the best one to the date at least that was made till 2005 of course after this came the whisperer in the darkness that we're gonna talk about further made by the same company that made this one uh, i completely agree it might might be the best, most authentic or true to Lovecraft's uh, stuff. There's other really excellent ones, but they're excellent because of different reasons. And uh, I really like recommending this one because it is an indie film made by competent people who really appreciate the source material. And um, there's a chance that not many people even know about this existing so i would recommend this to everyone who's interested in lovecraft or 20s silent horror movies i want to speculate a bit if this would have been a hollywood film the main character and there would only be one main character who would be combination probably all of all of these guys and he would be part of the the police who goes to the Louisiana swamps to get rid of the cult and he would be the researcher who gets all of this information and he would be the sailor who fights Tulhu with his ship in the end. I think that would be the route that that would have actually been taken if Hollywood would have somehow made this film. Yeah, I, I have to agree that it seems like the main character always finds himself in all of these momentous situations. And to me, the story also, the filmed story just works just fine. Like, like it did, like just have different characters doing these different things. It's completely fine. It's a story. You get to hear about the different exploits of different people and what it meant. Because the, one of the main themes is that it was different people and it how it happened to different people in different parts of the world and how many times can I say different in different sentences. <laughs> I'm gonna stop now. Monta I, I think you get my meaning here. Yeah, it's different. So yeah, <laughs> I, I totally agree. And I'm really glad that these guys found a way to come up with the budget to do this film without any basically restrictions from a producer standpoint. I, I believe that they had restrictions that the money money and the reality is uh, set to them, but I think they prevailed and made a perfect uh, adaptation based on the Lovecraft's original work here. Yeah, certainly better than anything else when it comes to uh, being true to the source material. Exactly, and I think we're closing the end, but before you go, I would like you to leave us a comment. What is your favorite Lovecraft adaptation? Also, leave us a like, subscribe our channel, hit that notification bell so you won't miss any of our weekly episodes.